Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio and today I'm sharing with you a collaboration I did called the Hashtag Secret Gadget Challenge. And the idea behind this collaboration of people on YouTube was to be paired up with someone and send them a gadget. Don't tell them what it is, just send it to them. And then also receive one from a different person. The gadget that I received came from Carly from Creatives Libin, and it is a punch. The, I sent a gadget to Marianne Mott at Marianne's Creative Mix, and you can look in the links below the video to see what I sent her and what she did with it. So we all got something different. I have no idea what anyone else received as gadgets, but there's a list in the description box below the video that shows you all the videos in the collaboration and you can go click through and check out what people's gadgets were and what they did with them. Should be fun. It <laughs> should be interesting. So I am uh, trying out different things with my gadget. It is obviously a edge punch and it looks kind of like lace. It has some hearts punched into it. Um, I'm using it with different gel printed papers that I have in my stash. You know, I have a ton of papers because I love to gel print. And so I'm punching them out and I, I had this idea of making a whimsical girl with a flower crown and using this, this edging lacing punch as um, as part of her clothing, maybe part of a headband, maybe part of the flowers. I wasn't sure. Um, this type of gadget is not something that I own or have I ever owned. I did scrapbook briefly, <laughs> but to me this is a scrapbooking supply. So of course since I'm a collage and mixed media artist, I want to do something completely different with it. So I punched out a strip. Well, I punched out the edge on a piece of jelly printed paper and then cut it down to make it into a lace strip um, that I'm going to end up doing my page in this gel print journal that I made a while ago. You've seen it before. If you watch my channel, you've seen me make it. Um, all these gel prints were made on cardstock and then sewn in with a um, stitched binding. So I found a bright, colorful gel print page and I drew um, a face and shoulders onto my page and now I'm just <clears throat> filling that in with white gesso to cover the gel printed area. Um, still not sure whether I want some of the print to show or not but I'm giving it a couple coats of gesso so that I can uh, do the face. This strip I thought might be interesting across the bottom as like part of maybe a dress. At first I thought I was going to try to curve it and I did try on another piece to kind of like trim some out of the pattern to make it be able to curve better. But it, I just didn't end up liking it. So I decided to just make it straight across as if it was one of those like maybe tight dresses that are stretchy and then add lace across the top. Um, I also figured out how to make kind of a floral shape by taking a strip and bending it and folding it and bending it and folding it until it became a round shape and you saw that at the beginning. This project took me three hours and so a lot of it is sped up or cut out. Um, you know I didn't make you watch every single thing. So now I'm drawing uh, features on the face so that I can go ahead and paint it. Um, trying to figure out which kind of hair she should have. I do plan on putting the flowers all across the top and making a flower crown. I saw these beautiful photographs on Facebook um, of, I, I wanna say Lithuanian women who apparently it's, it's uh, traditional to wear flower crowns. And I mean, these were, the thing that I'm making here is nothing in comparison to these beautiful, huge, halo-like flower crowns that these people make and wear. They're just absolutely beautiful. So that was kind of where my inspiration came from, was to try to make some type of a flower crown using 
the pudge to make the flowers, even though it's straight. Yeah. <laughs> this one was, this one was a real challenge. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do with the punch. So I took some red, blue, and yellow and me and white and made some skin tones darker and lighter and started my painting with acrylic I'm not going to finish it with acrylic I'm going to end up mixing my media like you see me do sometimes but of course I need a lot more of these flower shapes and so I start to punch some other colors of paper I decided I wanted to be very colorful kind of like spring with pinks and orange and green and blue and lots of of pretty colors and so I don't make you watch all the punching and making of the flowers. That took me a long time. Um, but you get the idea. I, I punch it out, trim it down with a trimmer, and then um, I start to kind of roll and fold, roll and fold, roll and fold, trying to make it turn into a circular shape that looks like a flower with the petals coming out. Um, because that top part of the punch does have bumpy, bumpy, bumpy like petals. But um, I need to fold them in half. And I don't really want you to see the heart shapes as much. Because the, the main thing that I see on that punch is those hearts when I look at it. I wanted to make it more abstract. So um, I, I fold them and then uh, I glue them down and... The size can change of the flower depending on how tight you make the, um, the folds. Also, uh, trimming down the, the when, I, when I sliced the pieces, there's like one dot on the bottom and on the blue one I did, I cut off that dot. So it made it slightly more narrow because I wanted different sizes of flowers. Um, here's the pink one. I wanted to show you that, um, you could make an infinite border with this like piece. You could It could go on forever. Um, one thing I didn't do that I thought about doing was to punch it on both sides, to cut a strip and then punch it on both sides so that you would have like kind of like an eyelet. You could punch it in the middle and thread some ribbon through it. I mean, there's lots of options with this punch. But I just made it straight on one side and then folded them in. I had no need for a double-sided one, but you could certainly do that. So then back to the girl, uh, she's she's dry now. I, you know, I'm, I used acrylic paint. I, I set it aside to dry while I was making lots of those flowers. And then I'm now adding in some more detail using Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons. I, I like to do this method on my whimsical faces uh, for the shading and over at the left, you can't see, uh, I guess I had this zoomed in more than I thought, but there's a dish with a little bit of white acrylic paint on it. And I'm using a, a, a water tank brush and I dip into the acrylic paint um, to give a little bit of more blendability to these, these pencils over, I mean, not pencils, crayons over the acrylic. Just gives it slight, it cream, makes it more creamy. Um, by blending that crayon pigment in with a little bit of acrylic also makes it more permanent because these are water soluble crayons like it says on the box so <laughs> they will reactivate with water unless they are sealed so um, there's gonna be you know quite a bit of this painting of the girl because that was a lot a large part of it um, there's a lot of layering involved when you're making skin tones and I have the brown then I have like kind of a pinky pinky skin tone that I'm adding in um, here I am thinking about the hair and I knew that I had a nice bright blue flower and I decided and there was a little bit of blue in the background the background is just kind of a mess <laughs> but um, but interesting it was a multiple layer print with a homemade stencil and you know there's just there's a lot going on in the background so there's a little bit of of pink a lot of pink a little bit of green a little bit of orange a little bit of blue in the background so I decided to make her hair blue and just kind of a long bob um, cut so that 
it doesn't come down over her shoulder since I worked so hard on the collarbone and everything there. <laughs> I didn't want it to cover that after I had worked so hard. So I added in some periwinkle and some blue crayon and then I'm going in with a different water brush. This one has a flat brush on the end. These are from Arteza uh, water brush set that I think has six different ones and there's three flat brushes, a wide, medium, and small, and then three round brushes, a large, medium, and small. And so I'm using, I think, the medium of the round brush and then the small of the flat brush um, as I'm doing this. The flat brush helps me blend a little bit faster um, and smoother maybe than the round brush, but the round brush gets into cracks and crevices and areas where the flat brush would just you know be too big so that's why it's nice to have a couple different brushes to use still have that white acrylic paint um, that I'm blending in and you and some some cases using it fairly straight like when I do the highlights on the nose the eyelid um, the, the brow bone the chin I'm using it fairly straight uh, white that has been um, you know, made not as thick and not as opaque by mixing it with the water on the water brush. I enjoy doing this. This is something that I've been doing for years and um, it's an interesting method to make kind of a translucent looking glowing type of skin tone on whimsical girls. So I'm bringing back in some more dark, that brown to add in some more shadows just you just go back and forth sometimes I let it I, I move to a different part of the figure to let what I'm working on dry you don't want to get it too wet it gets a little bit crazy um, if you get it super wet it starts to the lines won't stay crisp and it wants to kind of puddle and blend too much so moving around to different areas of the image as you go is a good idea. I decided if she was going to have blue hair that she should have blue eyebrows. I've seen people dye their hair and their eyebrows. Dyeing eyebrows is a little bit tricky. <laughs> it stains your skin. I've done it before. But um, now I don't bother. I just put one purple streak in my, streak in my hair and call it good. So I'm bringing in some more of the light pink and then also some very bright pink, which is complementary to what's in the background. You know, you, if, if you have a color in a place on your page, you should have it in more than one place. So I have that fuchsia color crayon going on with the lips and the cheeks. And... Um, Continuing to, you know, modify the shapes of the eyes, add more um, light on the eyelids, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. This is how it works when you paint a face. Any type of face, even if it's an animal, you still got to do layers if you're using this method. Decided she should also have blue eyes because blue hair, blue eyebrows, blue eyes made sense to me. <laughs> so... I decided it was time to do some of the collage portion. And so I have some Liquitex matte gel medium. It's a thicker matte medium that I'm using um, on the backs and also on the page as I'm attaching. I first attached that strip across the bottom for the top of her dress. And then I'm starting to attach the flowers and I'm putting, um, I don't know if you saw me punch those. I hope there's a section in here. The green thing I just put on there, the little leaf, I just punched a strip of green and then I cut them apart in kind of a leaf shape. So they come to a point and then they are rounded at the top and it's one little section. Oh, here it goes. Now I'm doing it. Punching another strip of it. So this punch, you punch a section then you line it up with the pattern on it uh, that's printed on it you line that up where you've punched and punch again and it just continues and continues and continues you could make it make a 50 yard one if you wanted to I don't know why you'd want to <laughs> but 
if you wanted to, you could. So um, here I am making some more of those leaves, cutting them apart and making just kind of a leaf shape with a pointy end. And then I tuck those little pointy ends under the different areas of the flowers as I stick them on. And I've got some pink, some blue, some orange, and then that green coming through. And um, I think it looks like a flower crown. It's it's kind of random, maybe, but I think it does look like a flower crown. I decide that the one over um, on the left is making the shape weird, so I pull it off and put it somewhere else. <laughs> it would be fun to wear a flower crown. I would like it. So um, I didn't realize I was off the the camera at this point but I have the tray I have a styrofoam tray filled with all the punch outs from the punch every time I punched everything out I just dipped it took the paper and tipped it into this little styrofoam tray to keep them because I thought I would use them especially since there's hearts there's also little dots and then there's this other random shape uh, that I didn't think was very interesting but I glued different colored hearts into the bodice area of that at the bottom there with the oranges. I put blue, green, and pink um, alternating into the hearts that were punched out. Then I gave her some earrings uh, with the punched hearts. And then I also, uh, oh, I guess I'm not doing it yet. I guess I'm finishing up my details. So I've got my crayons back out. You know, you got to let things dry in between. And I'm adding some darker blue, some light, light blue, and some purple into her hair. And giving it a little bit more definition. Uh, adding more blue into the eyebrows, into the eyes. And just, make, just making some more definition on the drawing, painting. Then I have a black Stabilo All pencil. Um, I tend to want to be an illustrator, so I tend to want to put black around things. So I am using that uh, just a little bit in the face and hair and around the tops of the shoulders. And I'm going to blend it. And then also in and around the flower crown to add a shadow. It's all kind of one tone at this point. It needs some shadow into it. so. The Stabilo All Pencil is highly water reactive and I'm blending it with my um, water tank brush. Adding in some more black just, just to make some dimension and uh, separation of all these flowers in the flower crown. Drawing it on and then blending it with the water brush. I think that really helps. It makes... Uh, some contrast on the page. Decide to brighten up the cheeks a bit. Her little cheekers need to be a little bit brighter. I want this to be very bright, bold and bright. And on the video, it looks a little bit subdued, but when you see the pictures at the end, you'll see it's very bright. So I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can turn on your notification bells. And um, all those things help my channel grow by helping people find me. If, if you liked my video, then someone else might like my video. YouTube will recommend it. That's how it works. Um, also, don't forget to go down to the description box below the video. There's like a little show more. There'll be links there for you to go and visit other people in the collaboration and see what gadget they received and what they did with it. Um, I'll be interested to see what Marianne did with the gadget that I sent her. <laughs> I'm, that's the first one I'm going to, and then I'll go see everyone else's. So to finish up, I added these little hearts um, that were the punch outs that, from the centers of the lace punch all over the place, in the hair, in I mean, not in the hair, but in the flower crown and on the background, I just dotted glue and then um, stuck them in there and pressed down with a baby wipe 
to get rid of any excess glue. Then I put the words with a Posca pen, follow your heart on the side there um, with a black Posca pen and filled the little heart in with a bright pink Posca pen. Um, those are acrylic paint pens that I like to use in my mixed media art. And then the final thing that I did was to add glitter because I thought she just, I just thought she needed glitter. So I used um, diamond uh, iridescent stickles, glitter glue. And I started out on just the heart and I thought, well, the earrings need it. Oh, well, the, the hearts on her dress need it. Oh, well, hearts everywhere <laughs> need it <laughs> because glitter. And then I ended up putting some in her eyes and on the, the top part of her bottom lip. So that is it for me for this hashtag secret gadget challenge collaboration. I hope to see your comments on everyone else's videos as well as mine. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>